What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Big Dogs Got Eat Fantasy Football. As always, it's your boy, Nicholas. <laughs> uh, we're in the subscriber league right now. I set the league to draft at 7 o'clock, but for some reason went off at 6.45. First four picks went off because we didn't think it was that early, but we were able to uh, pause it until 7. There's 14 people in the league. Four of them are not here. It's hard to organize everyone together because everyone's on different time zones and everyone's working and, you know, school and whatever. I got people talking shit already. I remember one of your videos that you were high on Lacey. I hope he's a good pick. So I had the fifth pick. Two wide receivers, two running backs, tight end, one flex. Half PPR, six point per passing touchdown. And we eliminated the kicker. Fuck. So I had the fifth pick, as I did with my big money draft. Took Odell again. Five with OBJ. I don't pick again until pick 24. I'm actually kind of interested to see how this draft works out because, I mean, I'm assuming a lot of the people in here, since they're my subscribers, have been swayed one way or another by the videos I put out. So there's a there's a good chance that the guys I like will go quicker than they would in other drafts. It's a $10 buy-in. We haven't figured out the money situation yet. We'll probably do like winner takes 80%. I don't know. Second place. Wow. El Numero Uno. What you doing, bro? I'm about to put all my subscribers on blast right now. Juan. Don't you know Zeke's out for six games? 10th overall. Jordy 11. How did AJ Green last till 13? I'm pissed. I told them all AJ Green and Devonta Freeman broke their shoulders today not to pick them. I don't think they listen to me though. I think I'm full of shit. I'm in four cash leagues. This is the fourth and final one I'm drafting in. I have two 10 teams and two 14 teams. So, I already see I'm not getting one of the elite running backs, which I know means I'm probably going to be hurting at running back already. See, these rankings are where they get you because you got a guy like Gronk here when normally if you're in a sharper league, he's going off the board. He's off the board already. You're at pick 19, he's 90% of the time he's off the board, but he's all the way down here at pick 34. So I don't know if it's people don't see him, because that's definitely a possibility, but I would love to have Gronk in a 14-team league, because that puts you at such an advantage at the tight end position. He's a player that you could trade in a big league like this. You know, players are, people are going to be hurting for depth, and I might be hurting for depth. So Gronk is someone that you could trade because he's so valuable at his position, and you could probably get like a twofer. Like you can get a wide receiver and a running back for for Gronk or get like a, a real good either receiver running back and then pair it with like a decent, like, I don't know, like someone like a Delaney Walker or like a, a mid-tier tight end and then also get like a nice wi a wide receiver running back to pad your depth but lose a little bit of value at tight end. But so we have McCaff go before, who's a rat pack? Who the fudge are you, bro? Cash. That's a sick name, by the way. Is that your real name? Cash. I don't think it is. We're in a Facebook group together. Like a private Facebook group. We're just kind of talking nonsense and figuring out all the settings and the roster positions and stuff. Wow, they actually have Travis Kelsey ranked ahead of Gronk here, huh? Yo, it blows my mind that Yahoo has this interface and they have like so much of their traffic comes from fantasy football, I'd assume, during this part of the year. And so much of the revenue they make probably does. But the fact that they just are so shitty with it. You can't do a PPR versus standard mock draft when you want to can't do it they don't like let you customize anything and then they have shitty ass rankings like this i'm gonna lay off gronk i would normally never let him go past 24 but we have two oh man should i let him fall we have two auto drafters and yahoo's gonna take the top guys available here so the, that's out of the next eight picks four of them are gonna be gone and not be gronk so i could take a chance and have the other eight uh, no, I probably shouldn't do that, I feel like. You take Cooper and then just get Kelsey in the next round if I want to. I'm scared, guys. Yeah, I'll go Coop here. I don't think Gronk's going to fall to me next, but either way, there's more quality depth at tight end. At receiver, I won't really have to worry about the position for the year. Now, I, I got to focus on running back. Or if Gronk falls to me, I'd go absolutely bonkers. Oh, this is taking so long. Isn't he on auto pick? So if Gronk's off the board, I actually will probably wait on tight end even further because I'm actually really high on Jimmy Graham. If you guys follow me, you know how high I am on Seattle. Yeah, you have Jimmy Graham and Jordan Reed all the way down here. I'm really high on the Seattle offense this year, so I'd be okay skipping on Kelsey if, if Gronk fell down here. That's what I probably should have done in my big money league. I should have took like an Alshon Jeffrey and then waited on Jimmy Graham a few rounds later instead of reaching up for Kelsey, but it is what it is. Well, Pryor and Hilton are all going before Gronk. It's crazy to me. Mm, and Kelsey just went off before him. Ah, fuck. So now I'm about to be up. I actually like Carlos Hyde a lot, but I am getting really high on Keenan Allen. I thought he's looked really good this preseason. Playing six point per passing touchdown in this league. And A-Rod's available at 33. So do I look at Rodgers? Do I look at another running back here? I'll go Keenan Allen here. Locks up my flex. So now I have three really, really solid flex, uh, receiver options. Half point PPR. They should do work. And also, I, uh, I tweeted out. If you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you're going to follow me on Twitter. I tweet out a lot of stuff that I don't put in my YouTube videos, but I uh, made a schedule for what I'm going to be doing in-season content-wise. I didn't really figure it out yet, 
What I think I'm going to do is every Tuesday, I'm going to come out with a, a blog post, which is my waiver wire sheet, you know, top waiver wire pickups for the week. And it'll be uh, only guys that are like owned in less than 50 or 60% of Yahoo League. So it's, so it's relevant to most people. I'm not sure which day of the week they want to do it, but Fantasy Football Advice, the YouTube channel, um, they're doing a weekly podcast and they want me to be on it. So I'm going to be doing that with them. I'm not sure which day that is, if it's going to be Thursday or Friday. And then I want to do my own video, which is basically a seasonal recap. This is what I was thinking for the in-season content. Tuesday, waiver wire podcast. And for my video, this will be like the segments. Your guys' questions, I'll take like five to 10 of them that I think are most relevant. And I'll go over injury news, notable wide receiver cornerback matchups that you should either stay away from or exploit. Streaming defense of the week, um, a recap of my E-Town Get Down League. And then a subscriber league week recap and a locks of the century. Locks of the century are, are like my bets. So I'm going to look at the spreads. I'm going to look at player props. I'm going to look at over-unders and tell you a couple of the bets that I think are locks of the century for the year or for the week. Y'all are gambling types. If you guys are gambling types, my cousin on Twitter is an animal. Let me pull up his, his profile right now. Swamp Bang. This is him right here. So go follow him. If he's a, he's a capper, he's money too. So if any of you guys are into betting, gambling, go follow him on Twitter at Swampy underscore Swami. Tell him Big Dog sent you. Yep, I knew Fitz wouldn't get to me. Fitz, Rogers. Wow, I'm surprised Rogers fell to uh to 40. Six point pass touchdown league. I don't even know what to make of Marshall. Half of me is just like he's a savage. Half of me is like. Uh, it's, I feel like it's unrealistic to expect a big year. But Lynch is just one of those beasts who just has that intangible. You know that just. If he, if someone would do something crazy like this and pull it off, it would be him. I don't want to bet against Beast Mode and lose. I think that would hurt my pride too much. I'm definitely looking to grab a tight end with one of these picks because I want one of the top tight ends this year, whether it's Greg Olson, Jimmy Graham, Jordan Reed. I might go quarterback tight end in these next couple picks because I'm super high on Wilson and I'm super high on the other tight ends that are left here. And then for me, there's kind of a fall off after that. Actually, I really like Matt Ryan too, because it's six point pass touchdown league. He's definitely going to throw a lot of touchdowns. As much as they want to say new offensive coordinators in there, they're not really tweaking much there. And he still has, people are like, the only good argument, not even good, the only argument I've heard against Matt Ryan is that he was so good last year that he has to have regression. I haven't heard a single thing other than that. I get it. Sure. I'm sure he's going to have regression, but it doesn't mean that he's, what if he falls off a hundred passing yards and two passing touchdowns? Still a monster fantasy season. All right. So Greg Olson's off the board. See now in this situation where I, you know, you know, I know I'm targeting a tight end. I would look and see if the teams in front of me, one of them has a tight end, two of them have a tight end. So there's a good chance that at least one of these tight ends gets back to me because it's only two teams I could take them. So they'd have to go two for two on taking tight ends. Even no, I almost don't want to chance it right now. I'm going to grab the running back here. I'm going to go Abdullah. He does not have a running back yet. Ooh, Fat Rob. Or as in my draft video, Fat Fabulous Rob. Uh, My friend in the hat, his name's Steve. Honestly, he had me crying when I was editing my live draft video. It's like, uh, so I picked a guy and I, I thought his name was Fab Rob, as in fabulous, but it, it, but it turns out it's actually Fat Rob and uh, he's a fat piece of shit. Bobby Bernstein, you're better than that. He drafts Rob Kelly and then two seconds later asks if he's uh, he's a starter. Oh my god, uh oh. One of the tight ends off the board. This guy still needs a tight end. Please don't draft Jordan Reed. Do me a favor and let me have this. Yes, you want LeGarrette Blunt. Love that. Give me Jordan. <laughs> All right, 14 team league. I'm actually really liking how my team's turning out right now. We've got OBJ, Amari, Dula, Jordan Reed, Keenan Allen. This is why I like to weigh in the quarterback position because no matter what, you're going to have a good player there. By the time my next turn comes around, all these guys will probably be off the board. This is where I don't necessarily love Terrence West. I don't I definitely don't like Frank Gore. But when you're in a deep league like this, a big part of winning your league is going to be your waiver wire pickups. So, you know, by the time Gore's play really falls off, which would be I mean, it's probably going to be really bad because Luck's not there, but it'll be a few weeks into the season, four or five. Same thing with West. So if that does happen, you know, by that time, you'll already have your eye on some guys in the waiver. You'll already have picked up some some possible running backs. And that's another reason why I prefer going wide receiver strong a lot in the beginning is because if you're in a league, right, you have your wide receivers, you have a running backs. If a, if a starting running back goes down in the NFL, you always have, there's always a big value boost to someone, to the player who's behind him in the depth chart. When that happens in, in the NFL with wide receivers, it's not really always the case. Like, of course, the other wide receivers on the team get a boost. If, if Abdullah goes down, Riddick is going to be a beast. If Adrian Peterson or Mark Ingram go down, the other one's going to be awesome. And, and that's the case with a lot of players. So for the most part, the high valuable 
waiver wire pickups usually come in the form of running backs and they're much harder to pick out in terms of wide receivers because fantasy is very comprised of volume right just opportunities when you get it when you get a player that you know is going to get 15 touches a game that's a great floor and you'd love to have them in your lineup you'd love to pick them up off the waiver wire anyone that can give you that kind of opportunity with receivers it's very hard to kind of pick and choose which games you know they're going to see three targets which games are going to see 10 targets but if you have a number one running back you know for the most part you're seeing at least 15 touches there so where i'm looking there's really not much of a fall off from like a Marcus Mariota or a Big Ben to a Derek Carr. So I might even wait a full another round till I get a quarterback, get to later in the draft rather than that and, and kind of build up on my skill players right now because it is deep 14 teams. So you're going to need a lot of depth. So I'm looking at Danny Woodhead as my RB2. I'm actually glad I didn't get Thomas Rawls in my big money league now that the news just came out that he has a high ankle sprain. Yeah. So Danny Woodhead just got back to practice. He practiced in full this whole week. Same thing with Flacco. So their offense should be full steam ahead. I'm not saying it's going to be high power, but not a lot of running backs left. So I kind of need to, uh, get on that oh i'm sorry for the lack of energy y'all it's been a long day long well, business day i signed a new client today marketing wise and i met another possible client at the starbucks i was sitting at he was like looking at my screen and he randomly came over he's like hey are you on shopify right now guy who runs his own business called proteingoals.com it's pretty big apparently we'll see just it's just been a lot of, a long day a lot of work not really looking at cam at six point passing touchdown he's a little downgraded in this type of format rivers nah i'll pass son on a points per game basis rivers is just not there for me super inconsistent i think last year it was like one out of the last 12 weeks he was a, a qb1 and something ridiculous like that pick 89 where are we at where we at, though? I love Rashard Matthews to start this year while Corey Davis gets back. Decker and Davis both have been dealing with injuries this offseason. He's the most consistent part of that offense. Ooh, there are no running backs, man. I'm going to look to get Burkhead next time. I'll take a Hogan share. Why not? Pick 89. Him and Cook should both move around a ton. Hogan should see 100 targets in that offense. You know, Edelman was such a target eater, right? He had, I think he had like 160 targets last year, something crazy like that. So that's a lot of targets up for grabs. You know, even if you don't think Hogan's that good of a player, which I actually do, I think he's a pretty good wide receiver. He's bound to have a decent number of targets in this offense. And these are all quarterbacks I would be perfectly fine having as my starter in a 14-team league. I don't want him starting, but I wouldn't be mad if Palmer, like, was a good streaming option for me. I would love Quiz if they didn't have that week one game get canceled because now instead of get miami who sucks as a run defense pushes that game back and now he gets the giants in week four so it's a huge trade-off rosy i seen you down there bro i think i'll get enough production out of my wide receivers and my flex and my tight end that running backs won't have to be at a premium you know i don't have to i don't necessarily need rb1s and rb2s even though i think abdullah will give me really solid numbers as well Jennifer gets the cardinals dalton gets the ravens that's a much easier matchup for dalton i was actually looking at the splits for dalton he's he's he performs really, really well against the Ravens. Not terrible against other teams, but he just always performs really good against the Ravens. They just have a pretty shoddy secondary. And he's got a lot of weapons there right now that supposedly are healthy. I mean, Jan John Ross is hurt, which is which is annoying because I'd love to see him at full strength. But I'm going to hope Dalton falls to me. And then I think Dalton Cardinals 2017 schedule. Look how I typed that in. They already knew I wanted 01217 schedule. A couple defenses off the board. Here we go, boys. They're still starting running backs, quarterbacks, and wide receivers on the board. So you see Dalton start matching up teams, right? Dalton's got an easy first week schedule. Then he plays a tough Texans team. Palmer gets second week. He gets the Colts, which is great. Bengals and he gets the Packers which is great then he gets the 49ers so you combine these quarterbacks together and you're getting a really easy slate of teams come on baby let Dalton fall to me so right now I'm looking at a combination of like Dalton and then preferably probably quiz Burkhead Burkhead being my first choice here and I could probably wait on Palmer for a little while I like Corey Davis too that late Cooper Cup. Davis is like one of those guys where I, I definitely believe in Davis's talent he could be like you know it, it, the OBJ season where no one really knew OBJ that much because you had guys like Mike Evans go off the board of him. and they had a, another wide receiver i can't remember who who it was that year but they were much bigger names than obj at the time kind of went under the radar he had that injury in the beginning so he didn't play the first few weeks and then when he did that's when he blew up so if you're not keeping an eye on the rookies like that like a Corey davis who by you know it, he is going to be playing already in week one but he might not acclimate himself might not get full slate of snaps until like week three or four and then he might blow up wow i didn't realize randall cobb was still on the board at this late honestly it would not surprise me to see randall cobb be the wide receiver too by the end of the year Devontae adams fall back you just look at over the last few years i feel like the only constant there ever is the wide receiver one it's been a revolving door between jordy at one and then randall cobb james jones Devontae adams yeah you know rogers is going to put up crazy numbers but like who's going to be the one that has the, the double-digit double touchdowns behind him, right? 
who knows so i'm gonna grab burkhead here a couple new england is on the bench and go back to guy could be worse than some some offensive skill players on the best football team in the world All right, we're in round 10. It's actually kind of nice not having a kicker right now because I always think, oh, the last two rounds I have to use on kicker defense. We decided everyone was basically just like, fuck kickers. I was like, hell yeah, thank God. Y'all think just like me. If I only need a defense, and then I'm probably going to use two of these bench spots on on a backup quarterback as well as a backup tight end for Reed. Hooper, Bray. I actually low-key like Braid a lot this year. He's probably going to be the pass catcher to own there. <laughs> Feast mode. They know not to touch my boy Chris Carson down here. Where is he? Did someone take him? I think Chris Carson, the Seattle running back, might be the only guy I own on every money league I have this year. I don't know why. I'm just like in, <laughs> I'm in love with Carson, man. Hey, we got my boy Palmer. I might go grab Carson now because I don't think he's going to fall to me. Where, where are you, bro? Where do they have him ranked? Sick. They got him ranked 2,540. Nobody's finding his ass. This guy's just follow me on Twitter. His name is Bagon Targaryen. I like that though. Shout out you if you watch my videos. I'm gonna grab Carson here. Everyone in this league probably knows how much I like him. If they follow me on Twitter, then they do. Therefore, I don't. I feel like he's not gonna fall to me later. We already picked 145 in round 11. That's crazy. Yo, if I swear if Chris Carson pops off this year, I'm gonna end up winning every one of my leagues. It's gonna be fucking epic. Paul Richardson too. He's already named the starter. Two wide receiver sets. So we moved ahead of Tyler Lockett. So this is the final roster. Not too shabby, if I will say so myself. I think Danny Woodhead is going to surprise a lot in 0.5 PPR leagues. I really like him this first week, too, because he's got Cincy and uh, Burfecht is out. He's going to be missing the first few games, so should take advantage of that linebacker core. Flacco's back in there. Tough matchup for Abdullah. I'll have to see what happens with Odell. I might have to sit him. It sucks because, you know, I would de be debating between, like, Rex, Hogan, Paul Richardson, but I'm not going to throw in Hogan or Burkhead over Odell now because we don't know. Like, if Odell plays, obviously I want to start him. If I play one of these guys, then I have to start them tonight because it's Thursday night. Otherwise, if Odell sits, I'd be perfectly happy playing Paul Richardson in that flex. Wide receiver two against a really terrible pass defense in Green Bay. So, while it's a huge fall off, obviously, from OBJ to Paul Richardson, it is something I can kind of combat. But that's the squad. 14 teams, subscribers only league. I'm looking forward to the trash talk in this league. I'm looking forward to the season overall. Game time kicks off in about two hours. So for all y'all with some players in their lineups that are going tonight, good luck. Good luck on the season. I hope your drafts went well. I hope I was able to help you guys in any way possible. And as always, y'all can hit me on Twitter, email me, Facebook, YouTube comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video or if you've enjoyed any of the stuff that I've done this summer. I greatly appreciate that. And of course, the channel's growing a little bit, so it's harder and harder for me to hit every single question. I'm going to try my best, but uh, yeah, just blow my shit up and I'll eventually get back to you probably. So that's that. I'll talk to you guys later.